Welcome back, Awakening Beauties. So happy to have you here with me today. My name is Robin, and this is my no buy year. And by that, I mean I have not been buying new clothing, accessories, house goods, skincare, or makeup for the entire year unless I needed a replacement product. Something broke, something expired, I ran out of something. Going into the holidays, I've been thinking about how to navigate the holidays, but really I want to talk about, and, and, and I'm preaching to myself in this case, because there's a lot of pressure that we put upon ourselves as we go into the holidays. And I, I just wanted, wanted to make a video to talk about how we can navigate this holiday season in a joyful and meaningful way. And maybe give you some tips and some things that I'm thinking about that I'm going to be working on, trying to implement implement for myself. And so here's some tips on how to navigate this holiday season in a mindful and joyful way. First thing, and I think this is the key to pretty much everything in life, really is to manage your expectations. I remember for myself coming back from vacations, I used to call it my post vacation blues and noticing how I would get sort of depressed after coming back from vacation. The first time I remember this happening to me is prom night when I was a senior in high school and I went to my high school prom and I remembered coming home taking off my makeup, taking down my hair and the million pounds of hairspray that were in my hair. So getting in the bath, washing my hair, taking everything off and all of that build up, all of that preparation for that one moment, that one night. And I just felt so sad and so depressed. There were some other reasons for that. Me and my boyfriend broke up, but we still went together to prom. So <laughs> in hindsight, I wouldn't have done that. But either way. But the point is that when we plan a big event and we're thinking about how it's going to be and how we want our how to feel in it, how we want our family to enjoy themselves. And then sometimes it does live up to your expectations and sometimes it doesn't. So being realistic to know that there are going to be ups and downs. Maybe not everybody's going to get along in your family. Maybe you're not going to get the presents that you were expecting you were going to get. And there's so many things that can happen that we have to be able to be resilient. We have to be able to pivot and adjust for little snafus that may occur along the way. And you also can remember that it's okay to have a quiet or a low key holiday celebration if that's what you want and that's what you need. And it doesn't have to be this grand event. It can be more low key and it can be what you need it to be. Number two is reflect on your values. So focusing on the things that matter to you are what's going to help to reduce the stress during the time. And it's important to know what are your core values. This is a good time to maybe sit down and do some journaling of, to reflect of what really matters to you in life and that you can bring forward into the holidays so that it becomes what you need it to be, what you want it to be. Your holiday doesn't have to look like anybody else's. And I think, wow, you know, when you look at Instagram, when you look at Pinterest, when you watch YouTube channels, you're seeing the best versions of people on these platforms. You're seeing an idealized version. And these people don't actually have these lives that they look like. They do not have the Martha Stewart home. And even if they do, Maybe there's not too much happiness going on in that home. Maybe there's not too much joy. Maybe people are afraid to put something in the wrong place <laughs> lest they be chastised for that. I often will look at, you know, the way that 
some influencers have their homes decorated and there are times where it has really bummed me out that my home doesn't look like that that my life doesn't look like that i that i don't have that the money to to do to have the kinds of homes that they have to decorate my house the way that they have it decorated and that goes for christmas too i've seen you know it, it looks so beautiful and i just wonder how much money did they spend to get that look and that's not what's important though. It is the love that is within that home, the joy and happiness that is inside that home, the laughter, the memories that you're making together. That is what matters. It does, the aesthetics don't matter at all. So take the pressure off of yourself to have the perfect, the picture perfect home and gardens, Martha Stewart looking home for the holidays or the perfect meal, or <laughs> any number of things, or the perfectly wrapped gifts. My gifts do not look beautiful. They don't. <laughs> they, they look okay, you know? But I, I see some people, they're taking photos of how all this beautifully wrapped gifts. I mean, if that's your thing and you enjoy that, good for you. But that's not what is important to me. What is important to me is the memories that I'm building within those times and the thought that has gone into the presents themselves. Because I, I like to put a lot of thought into what I'm giving to my husband or my nephews or friends. So take the pressure off yourself to have this picture perfect life because ain't nobody got a picture perfect life. It just doesn't exist. Simplify. That's tip number three. Consider simplifying. We often get invited to a lot of different events for the holidays and we want to make everybody happy. We want to show up. We want to be with our friends and family. But all of those commitments can sometimes take away a lot of our joy because it becomes stressful. If you work full time, especially, and you've got a family, you just may not have the time to honor all of those commitments, even if you want to. And your heart may, I'm sure your heart is in the right place, but you can let some of those go and you can just explain to the person who has asked you that, you, you know, thank you so much for inviting me to your holiday party. And it sounds like it's gonna be such a great time. And I, but I appreciate you understanding that I am just so overcommitted right now that I, I need to to take a break for my mental well being, for my mental health, and maybe you'll catch up and get together after the holidays. Maybe you won't be able to get together during the holidays, and that's okay too. And if this is a true friend, if these you know are people that really genuinely care about you, they're gonna understand and they're gonna be like, that's okay, I love you. I'll, I'll catch up with you after the holidays and we'll have our own post-holiday catch up and get together and people do a, a Friendsgiving after Thanksgiving. You can plan some things outside of the holidays that will be nice to get together because you know sometimes after the holidays it's like you've been getting together with so many people and there's so much stuff going on and there's so much buildup that after the holidays you're kind of relieved first of all but then second of all it's like oh man life is so quiet now where did everybody go so saving some of those celebrations and getting together to after the holidays is actually a really good idea to ring in the new year and the first few weeks of the new year to have those get togethers and you know, won't feel like such a, a crash right after the holidays. I don't know, this is just a suggestion. Whether this works for you or not, I don't know, but it's something to think about. Tip number four is stay mindful. Being mindful so that you're present in the moment to enjoy those little small joys and experiences that come along that we can often miss when we're just, our mind is going every which way and we're just running from here to there, trying to get gifts, trying to get food for the Christmas dinner we're gonna prepare. Just take a moment, do some meditation. That's a great tip too. Tip number six, do meditate. Just stay mindful 
and remember what the purpose of this holiday season is. And it's different for everybody because not everybody is a Christian that celebrates Christmas. Not everybody celebrates it for the same reason. But to me, see, I didn't grow up celebrating the holidays. I was raised as a Jehovah's Witness and we didn't celebrate Christmas. So um, I've been creating my own traditions through the past few years as I've began to celebrate the holidays. And to me, what this means is this is a time of year to, um, as we're winding down the year, we're getting ready to roll over to a new year, that it's just a celebratory time of remembering the people that we love, to remember all the blessings that we have in our life, to practice gratitude. Tip number seven, practice gratitude of what we have and the people that we love in our life. You know, this is a very festive time of year and it's so much fun and all the decorations and people being in a more jovial mood. And, and we can take that with us though into the rest of the year, which is something that I strive to do every day is to be festive and joyful in my life. I do enjoy the Christmas decorations. I, I feel like, wow, we should be decorating all year long for different things, although it is a lot of work, but it's fun. And I've always loved that aspect of Christmas, even when I didn't celebrate it, that, um, you know, the lights and, and the mood of people. I mean, you know, sometimes the mood isn't so great because people are not practicing mindfulness and not practicing gratitude. But in general, people tend to have a more upbeat mood during this time of year and, and uh, they're going to visit family and that can bring its own stressors. <laughs> so if you're get, going to go out of town or be around family that, you know, sometimes there's some contentiousness involved. Well, being mindful and practicing gratitude every day up until Christmas and then beyond Christmas, but if you're not doing it already, start it now. Get started with it, managing the expectation of what Christmas is gonna look like for you. Reflect on your values so that you can really check in with your intuition, with your gut feelings about whether you're, you know, you're gonna attend this thing or that thing, or if it feels right to spend this amount of money or that, you know, all of these things come down to listening to our inner selves, our, our, our higher selves, our inner guidance, our higher selves. And it's there. And by meditating and being mindful and practicing mindfulness, that means you become mindful of being mindful. Then you set yourself up to really be able to tune in to your values, your feelings, what feels right for you. And you can start preparing yourself for maybe those conflicts and those difficult relationships that you have in your family that you know that you're gonna be around them and that there's gonna be triggers and you can start preparing yourself for those triggers and, and how you're going to respond. And maybe you choose not to be around your family this time. Maybe you choose to do, like I said, a low key Christmas where, where you do it your way and not how anybody else expects you to do it. And if people love you, then they will understand. And if they don't understand, then that's really on them. And they're projecting onto you their their own crap and you can let that go. You don't have to take that on for yourself. So tip number eight is acknowledge your emotions. It's very normal to feel a wide range of emotions during this time of year. It is a festive time of year. It's a joyful time of year, but it's also a time of year where it can be financially stressful. It can be emotionally stressful. It's, it's more hectic but also sadness because you're missing people that you love, people that aren't in your life anymore. Maybe they've passed away or maybe you had a falling out with them or could be like in my situation where my, a lot of my family shuns me. Acknowledge your feelings. It's okay to acknowledge if you're feeling sad, if you're feeling, even nostalgia can bring about a sad feeling. It's kind of a bittersweet feeling you know, when we think about the way things used to be in our lives and, 
And it's just a really good time. I mean, especially as you're ending the year to think about the things that matter to you, to reflect on where you've been in your life and how far you've come. And just to be gentle with yourself, acknowledge your emotions and not beat yourself up for any emotion that you might be feeling because an emotion is sort of like a wave. It'll come and it'll go. <laughs> it's not permanent. It's temporary. It's just for the moment. So allow yourself to feel what you're feeling and acknowledge it. And the, the quicker you are at acknowledging it, the quicker it will be to flow through you and pass through you and out of you. The more we sort of fight our emotions and we don't want to acknowledge if we're feeling sad and that will lead to us feeling angry because we don't want to feel sad the worse it gets so the quicker you can just move through it breathe through it acknowledge it feel it let you know maybe you need to just sit and have a good cry sometimes it feels good to have a good cry <laughs> and that's okay do that if you need to do that tip number nine manage financial stress and this was something that happened to me last year. I was having a lot of financial stress. <laughs> I've told this story a few times already on this channel. So briefly, we ended up owing the IRS about $11,000 last year. And it was very stressful. And it happened, you know, right around September. It was towards the end of the year and right before the holidays. And, and I was turning 50. So I got really, you know sort of a midlife crisis kind of feeling of, of, I don't know. I just, I've been unpacking that a lot on this channel. It led me to do a no buy year, but during the holidays, I spent way more than I needed to and went into the new year with some debt, trying to get that all paid off, trying to get money saved and just to focus on the things that matter and, and not be materialistic, not be such consumerist because you know, it's not the thing that's going to bring you joy. It was nice as it was to get the presents that I got last year and, and things that I spent money on for other people. Um, I enjoy buying things for other people. I'm not saying that. I'm not gonna saying that I'm not gonna be buying people presents this year because I've already started. But but really just getting back to the thought is the thought that that counts, right? And and that you're not obligated to buy anyone anything, if it's, especially if it's not within your budget. So definitely sit down and make a budget for yourself if you haven't done that already, because it is very easy for it to get out of control. And before you know it, you've spent thousands of dollars that you don't have. And a lot of times that is just it's almost like trying to maybe buy people's love, buying their approval. Maybe that's your children. I don't know. Take a look at that. There's all sorts of reasons why people will overspend. But ultimately, it might come down to not enough self-love. Hmm. If I have enough love for myself and honor of my money, then I'm going to be more mindful, going back to mindfulness, about how I spend my money, even on gifts. Am I doing this for someone's approval, for their love? Am I trying to cover up a feeling within myself of lack, of not feeling worthy of somebody's love unless I give them this gift? So maybe you wanna look at maybe making some homemade gifts, something that you've actually put your time and effort into. Or maybe you plan an experience for somebody that doesn't cost a lot of money. Something that, that you can prepare yourself and just spending time with someone. Maybe it's a gift certificate with a day with you <laughs> doing something fun, like going to the beach or going on a picnic, going for a walk or a hike. So there's any number of things, well, depending on where you live, that might be something that you can give. I've done that with people before. I've got given them a gift certificate of an outing with me. <laughs> it doesn't have to be a physical present. What's more important is that you are physically present. Hmm? <laughs> I just made that up. Sounds pretty good. But that's what people really want from you. 
They'd rather have your presence. They'd rather have you present with them, that you are 100% with them. You're not on your phone or device distracted by something else that you are actually present with them. And that's what matters with your friends and family. That's the most important thing is that they have. So consider that as a present instead of a physical present. And I think I've mentioned this already, but it bears repeating and it'll be number 10 to practice gratitude. Uh, maybe, maybe I put that in there already. I don't know. I think I got, I get out of order with these lists, <laughs> with these numbering things. But practicing gratitude, focusing on what you're thankful for can shift your mood and perspective and enhance um, just your emotional well-being during the holidays. Consider starting a gratitude journal right now if you're not doing that already and finding the things in the day that you're grateful for and letting people know that you're grateful for them as well. And that is just a boomerang that will come back to you because then you will start experiencing what people are grateful to you about as well. And it's a wonderful loop when that happens. So being grateful can also lead you to, to finding ways to give back during the holiday season. Maybe that's volunteering at, uh, a, for a charity or an organization that needs help. Maybe that's volunteering with an animal adoption shelter. There's any number of ways that we can volunteer and give back during this time of year. And it doesn't always have to be about me, 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 me. In fact, the more it's about me, 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 the less happy I am. So don't make it about you. Make it about other people and getting out of your own head and stop thinking about all of your problems and start thinking about other people's problems and how you can be of assistance to those needing help. And that will... As Jesus said, there's more happiness in giving than receiving. This is very true. Definitely encourage you to look into ways that you can be of service to other people. So I hope that helps. I hope it gives you some things to think about during this holiday season. Sometimes we get so busy that we're just running here, running there. We can miss the moment. We can miss the joy and the fun that happens during this time of year. So take the time out to stop getting in that rat race of holiday spending and, and all that goes along with that. Because before you know it, it's going to be over and you will haven't missed it. So be mindful, be present, be grateful, be joyful, have fun and do what matters to you. And it'll all be all right. If you have some tips for everybody about how you plan to spend your holidays as far as your budget, as far as emotionally how you plan to manage it, please leave a comment below. I'd love to read those. And let me know how you're managing your expectations, how you're creating your own meaningful tradition, how you're honoring your core values through this holiday season. So thanks so much for being with me today. I really appreciate your time. And, you know, just remember to be gentle on yourself. Be kind to yourself because you're doing great.